How do you turn a big chunk of aluminum into a completely custom differential cover? Let's find out. After selecting the uh, 7.5 inch Toyota IFS differential as my front diff of choice for reasons I've outlined in several other videos, I realized that the stock differential cover was not going to work. I first thought about simply cutting off the large mount on the back of the stock cover and welding it shut. But I quickly realized after mocking up the diff that if I made a cover from scratch, I could move the diff much farther forward which helped with the CV shaft angles. I then decided that this was a good excuse to attempt my first true 3D milling operation on my 3-axis CNC mill. Using my scanned model of the differential and the CAD model of the Coyote motor, I proceeded to design and 3D print various versions of the cover. The clearance between the cover and the AC compressor was a limiting factor to how far I could move the diff forward. I designed the, the cover to basically have a nominal wall thickness of an eighth, eighth of an inch. But where it got close to the AC compressor, I cut that in half to a sixteenth of an inch and reduced my clearance to the ring gear by a similar amount. I figured if I was going to make a billet cover, why not take advantage of it and really cut it close. Once the design was finalized, I squared up the blank from some two inch plate and started making chips. The first operation was roughing out the inside with a 5 8 3 flute carbide end mill. Since I was machining a large pocket, I was concerned about the chips building up. A vacuum helped uh, keep the chips at bay and also prevented the mountain of chips on the floor with my open milling machine. This mostly worked. The next step was cleaning up the inside with a quarter inch full radius end mill. Unlike the outside, I kept the step over pretty large on the inside since you'll never see it once it's installed. proceeded to drill the mounting holes around the perimeter. I made sure to make one of them go all the way through to act as an alignment feature for when I flipped the part over. These two small uh, drilling ops are for some M6 screws that hold on the breather cover plate that keeps the breather from um, being directly exposed to the spinning rain gear. Then it was time to start hogging out the outside uh, perimeter of the part with the 5 8 end mill. There was a lot of material to remove. Finally, before flipping the part over, there was a finishing pass with a 3 8 end mill to allow for some smaller fillet radiuses that were part of the design. The 
first operation is complete and the part is ready to be flipped over. And this is where the through hole comes in handy. Using my digital probe, I was quickly able to get the part re-zeroed on the other side. The first operation on the top was to machine away the excess material around the perimeter of the part. Next was uh, roughing out the basic shape of the outside of the differential cover. Outside roughing operation is complete. Then I broke out the full radius end mill again to do the finishing passes. The first stop was adding the countersinks for the flathead screws that I'm using for additional rack and pinion clearance on the bottom of the differential cover. For the main uh, finishing passes, I chose a three thousandths of an inch step over. So, as you can see, it wasn't a very fast process, but it turned out really nice. The surface finish was really nice and clean.
You can see here that I didn't quite leave enough machine stock for the final passes in the very top of this arc. And so there's a little bit of the witness marks from the roughing operation. But in general, the whole part turned out fantastic, and that's the least of my worries. This finishing operation really wasn't required, but I thought it looked really cool when it was all done. Machining of the outside of the differential cover is complete and I have to say I couldn't be any more excited about this. For my first attempt at a 3D milled uh, bar stock part, I think it turned out fantastic um, and I'm looking forward to some more complicated parts in the future. Before removing it from the milling machine, I used a fixturing to tap the half inch MPT threads for the fill plug that's on the back of the differential. Next was the eighth inch MPT for the little breather that screws on top here to let the differential vent. Then I whipped up the little breather cover. This cover goes inside the differential to protect the, the breather from direct to splash from the ring gear. Here it is bolted to the inside of the differential cover and here you can kind of see how it protects the breather from getting directly splashed by the uh, gear oil coming off the ring gear. Sometimes people wonder how these projects can take several years but just look at the evolution of this part from going with the stock cover and just welding it shut as a quick solution to my first iteration of the 3D printed part with the breather on the left and the fill plug on the left, but uh, not enough clearance on the bottom for the rack and pinion, to cutting that up and moving the breather back to the right, to the final 3D printed version that shows the flathead screws and the extra clearance for the rack and pinion, and then the final version which has a few more changes including the reinforced boss to tie into the motor mount. A lot of changes, but the part once again turned out excellent and is now in the car. And I have to say, future me knows it doesn't leak and it works fantastic. Here's a big step actually putting the RTV on to put the cover on for good in preparation of uh, putting it back in the car.
there's an o-ring seal that goes on the pilot to try to seal the gear oil um, when it goes into the oil pan but I have to say I did uh, put some RTV on it too as a backup plan Front diff is bolted in for good. The minimal clearance uh, to the AC compressor is by design. There is not any relative motion between the two parts and thus I cut it as close as I could get to uh, move the diff forward as much as possible. It was almost an inch farther forward versus using that simple welded front diff cover. Here you can see how the differential cover ties into the engine mount which uh, provides some extra triangulation and strength and support to the differential. And finally you can see there's one last component missing here. There seems to be a piece missing between the transfer case and the front differential. Uh, maybe that'll be covered in a future episode. Stay tuned. Well that's a wrap on another episode of the All Wheel Drive Mustang Project, Project Traction. Hope you enjoyed this one. I had really a lot of fun uh, making the differential cover. I've been planning that for over a year and I have to say it was a little nerve-wracking at times, but uh, it turned out fantastic. It's in the car, it doesn't leak, and it fits perfectly after all that work. So now it's on to what's next. I had a, a list of things to do in the last episode, and that list is now slightly shorter, but we still have to fabricate the uh, jack shaft um, and the CV axle. So that's the next episode. And then I got to relocate the sway bar. I didn't realize that until after I started mocking up the axles that the sway bar was going to be in the way. So I got to relocate that, uh, basically move it up a little bit. And then uh, once the drive shaft is in, I got to get a drive shaft and then make a puck to mount the drive shaft. And I've already kind of mocked that up using a charger drive shaft and realized that the uh, calc converter is going to hit it. So I got to modify the catalytic converter uh, to get the exhaust back on and then if all that goes smooth um, I'm gonna, gonna install the transfer case controller so that it actually is all-wheel drive. And so that's what's gonna happen over the next uh, couple episodes um, and but I'm making great progress like I said I'm a little behind on the videos so once again you notice the Mustang behind me is not on the lift um, it has moved we'll say and uh, may even have, may even be all-wheel drive. We'll see. Anyways, little teaser there. Uh, so in that, on that note, uh, please like and subscribe. And like I've said before, I love, half the point of me doing this is to interact with people. And just recently, actually, I had a bunch of folks reaching out doing similar projects. So please leave a comment, ask questions. Um, and anything you want to know, I'll try to share the best I can. Also, if uh, anybody's curious, uh, I have weighed the car with all the parts in it. So why don't you put your guesses below as to how much it weighs now with all the all-wheel drive components in it. And we'll see how close we get. Um, I was surprised. We'll say that. So anyways, leave a comment, like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.